ligament structure, the bony articulations, and then uh, uh, we're going to get into the muscles and all that kind of fun stuff. So here's what you just heard, and then we're going from here. So let me just make sure that we're filming okay. Great. Okay. What happens the So the yeah. The caracalacrum. Wait, no. The you have the caracalhumeral ligament, which goes from the coracoid process to the humerus, and then you have your you have your uh, caracalacromial. So that's that's the top one. Okay. So caracalacromial right there, where that blue mark is, you drew, and then your coracohumeral ligament. Okay. Steph, you good? The caracalacromial next to this here? Uh, the caracalacromial goes here, and then the humeral kind of goes this way, just straight across. So is it like behind mm -hmm. this or in there? Probably, probably a little bit behind it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, now I'm going to come back to this multiple times, because um, what you were just asking me, Steph, is a good question. Uh, she was asking me, you know, if someone comes in with a frozen shoulder, can you help that? Yes, we can. And, but we've got to know the pathology of why it happens in order to work our way out of it, okay? So, the caracalhumeral one, this one right here. What's the bottom? This is the caracalhumeral. And was, real fast, was Mick kind of frozen shoulder? Mm, no, he was a, he was a, total, he was a super spinatus guy. I mean, so not it, it, but it could, it could lead to, with all the inflammation in here, um, he could have had a pinch it before because of hockey, being a hockey player, and you know, see the way he does push ups like this. Mick or Mick? Mick. Okay, well, Mick, okay, rode moto, most moto, <laughs> motorcycle accident, dislocated his shoulder multiple times, completely jacked it up or whatever else. I don't even know if he has ligaments in here, and he doesn't need it. So he could have severed the whole thing, and his muscles were kind of just holding it there. But when he came in and he was all forward like this and it was quote unquote bone on bone, it really could have been. But what we've done is we've, you know, we've, we've created, we worked the pecs, so we created this anterior shelf, which I'll get into. So you got an anterior wall. Then we worked the rotator cuff a ton and his posterior shoulder girdle a ton. So then everything's starting to move back like that into the right positioning to create this scapulohumeral rhythm, which I'll get into today. Once I go over this, uh, it's a little bit physics based and whatever, but if you just take the basic concepts, you'll understand why the therapies that we've used on, on Nick Kakuris, on Mick Charles, and then on now Casey have been highly, and Bob, have been highly effective. Now, one's a shoulder dislocation, two are partial rotator cuff tear. We got pretty much a full thickness tear and impingement with Bob. So, impingement and chronic impingement that we'll get into through here leads to other problems. Now Nick, had a, Nick already had some shoulder issues, he probably already had some AC joint issues, and then when, they, when, when he got, when he, so when he fell on him and his arm went like this, uh, yeah there was a trauma that happened, but if he hadn't had that inflammation and it was a weakened structure already, would it have been able to prevent it? Possibly. But it wasn't presenting itself very well. He no. came in with no issues. Right. He came in with no issues. That's what it said, so he didn't have any issues, how do you know? Like then when like that happens, then obviously there might have been stuff that was making him vulnerable. Well, he came in before he really was in hockey bowl season, and they started hammering him on practices and hours and hours and hours. Well, then we didn't really muscle test him again. We didn't do a reeval again, which we'll, we're going to start doing more often. But um, he wasn't presenting with anything. I mean, you were watching him in workouts. He was killing it on push-ups. His form was getting better. He was able to do planking and burpees and whatever, the only thing was is he was getting a lot of bounce. Yeah. And he likes to bounce and push up. And, and he does this. It goes this way and this, this way and this, right? So, so when he fell, his mechanism of injury is he came down like this, his elbow hit the ice and it went like this. So it went boom and just shot forward and it was kind of, it was actually up like that. So that's right in that supraspinatus part of the rotator cuff like we were talking about. This so, would also obviously Jack exactly. So these ligaments, good, that's a good segue. So these ligaments, when you get into an injury pattern like that, will get, they'll get stretched. And once ligaments are stretched, they don't go back. 
They, it's yeah, impossible, but very rarely. Mick Charles, probably even if he has ligaments in there, uh, went boom, and I mean it stretched so much because of that motorcycle accident. He's been compensating for 40 years, and by just reestablishing the scapular humeral rhythm, which we'll talk about in a sec, and you guys have heard me say, so it all makes sense, um, we've got a shoulder to move right now. Same thing with Lauren, Jacobson. His humeral head was right here, right? And he had no pec, so it just kept falling forward. He is a chronic dislocator. So we built his pec back up, then worked the backside of the rotator cuff and moved that humeral head back. Make sense? Yeah, it kind of freaks me out like every client, well, not every client, half the client that we have in here. Because all I do is say shoulders back and down because they all do this. So it freaks me out that I guess your face fell like Nick did and that happened. Well, yeah. Yeah, but um, hopefully the neural tissue is strong enough now because of that repetition. Like, and here's the thing, remember, right? There's four lesion points. So you have joint, you have nerve, you have muscle, and you have organic. All right. So most of the people we have probably don't have organic. We would have seen a lot more problems. I think they just would have been getting better. Mm -hmm. Neurologically and, and muscularly, their their neuro their neuromuscular habits are changing. But like the art, the bony articulations, how the joint is set, could be a thirty year old habit. Mm -hmm. right. right. It just hasn't gotten over that pain. Like who? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They haven't gotten over that that threshold where there's chronic inflammation that leads to pain. Are they on their way? Absolutely. Is it our job by doing what we're doing? Are we stopping the process or at least delaying it or retarding it a ton? Absolutely. Eventually, it'll get back. Yeah. You know, and it's our job then to give them the right stretches to really work on posterior shoulder girdle strengthening, rotator cuff strengthening, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be kind of, uh, that's what I'm doing. Like, I'm in the process of kind of redoing a lot of how we're going to be standardizing stuff. That if we know that's in there, like yesterday, we did a standardized shoulder warm up or movement preparation for them before they got into their big daddy muscle groups and everybody had a fantastic session. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw you doing that today too with the um, 930s, made it great. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking of like Doug, which is why I have him down there. Right. Not really shoulder, but kind of is. But he is, because he is like this. Yeah. That's yeah. called kyphosis or excessive shoulder protraction and his anatomy just holds him there. Like if you try to move his shoulders back, he's stuck. Like it almost looks like that with your tongue because of how right. Right. And I tell him to lift his chest and it's like he can't. Exactly. He can't because his anatomy, his joint structures won't allow it. Right. So we may be able to get him to the point where we can manage it well. Is it ever going to fully correct? It's possible, but it will take a long time. It's like it's like scoliosis. It can yeah. take a long time, but at least he's able to do the motion and just keep doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this. The practice of it is going to work, but we do have his condition under control. So we've done our job. Mm -hmm. But he's now a fitness person, so to speak, because he's passed everything and he's good. Now it's just managing that condition. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's move forward on this. And then we'll and then we'll go through these people because this is good. His, that was good. Okay, so we talked about a couple of these people, right? Actually three of them. One, two, three. And Casey. So we talked about a couple of them, so we'll get in and we'll classify what they are and what we do with them. Cool? All right, so now, those are the ligaments of that glenohumeral joint, okay? Now, you're not gonna have to know these necessarily, but um, I also, I just wanna let you know that there are ligament structures in this AC joint. They go, Mark, they go this way, okay? And there are, um, there are some ligaments and also some cartilage in this sterno, clavicular joint as well. Now, Steph, you asked me the other day about the sternoclavicular joint, okay? Sternoclavicular joint, you're like, well, I don't feel it move, does it really move? It does, it actually rotates, it's, it's like two, it's like shaped curve and curve. So you got the sternum and then the sternoclavicular joint and the clavicle, and so these two spots look like this, okay? Not that close together, but they kind of look like this, and then like that, and then there's some cartilage in between or whatever else. Well, this is your clavicle. This rotates up and it also elevates. So this is imperative that that happens because if you break your clavicle, you can't move your arm. You can't raise it because the minute you go to raise it, these bones just go 
and you can hear them crunching and all kinds of stuff, like it's nasty. And is there enough follicular production or not? Yep. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, with these two joints, now this is important, okay? Meaning that you find, you have to know. Them. So there is a small, there is a meniscus, a little meniscus. Remember what the meniscus are on the knee? Mm -hmm. What are they? What are they made up of? So they're medial lateral meniscus. What are they made up of? What kind of tissue? Cartilage, right? Why do we have that in there? Shock absorption and mobility, right? So that you also do have a meniscus in here in that AC joint, okay? So it gives you a little bit of cartilage and the support, a little bit of shock absorption because right there, that's a big motion. If you do this, if you find your AC joint and you do this, there's a lot of motion that happens in there, and there's a lot of motion that happens in here. But this is where the this is where the lever starts. This is where the lever ends. So this is a little bit more rigid. This is a little bit more mobile, which makes the AC joint more apt to injury than the sternoclavicular joint. So the AC joint is more apt to separation of sprains of that ligament, which is kind of a separation, and then a rupturing. It's, more, it's higher incidence of injury than the sternoclavicular joint because it's more mobile, right? So if it's more mobile, it's hot, it's more or less stable. Less, correct. Good job. <clears throat> Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. is there, so you're saying that's kind of a meniscal disc within the AC joint? Correct. Yep. And there's also one in the sternoclavicular? Mm, not as much. It's it's a little bit, like it's not gonna be bone on bone in there, but um, it's not as pronounced. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So on a test, I'm going to ask you which one has, which one is going to be, which has the highest incidence for injury in the shoulder, and the answer would be AC joint. Okay. That's a big deal because half the people we see in here have some kind of AC joint issue, and then if you also walk around like 24 hour fitness, or whatever, you see guys get up and bench, and they're always just like, like that. They're benching wrong. They're doing too much weight, and then they're going to end up separating the shoulder out. Okay. Like exactly. They're trying to bring it down like this instead of getting underneath, getting the proper lock in and push or push ups. People are like, oh, my shoulder hurts when I do push ups. Well, if all of a sudden you cause them to go in the thoracic extension, get that rotation of that humerus underneath, then this bone is not hitting the bottom of the AC joint. The humerus is not hitting the acromioclavicular. That pain goes away. Yeah. But it hurts because there's already inflammation in it. Okay. That's how you don't see anybody coming in that seems like Exactly. The only, time, like, the only time I've really seen a bunch of sternoclavicular problems is when there's been a fracture of that platelet, and then it causes movement dysfunction in that joint. Okay. So, all right. So, um, now don't, you don't have to write this down yet, but this caracalacromial ligament is the main culprit of most shoulder problems that we see. Okay? So what happens is when there's an injury, whether it's a whether this, whether you get a C joint problem, rotator cuff, muscle imbalances, this ligament in here gets very thick. It thickens because it has a lot of stress on it. And when that thickens, it decreases this what's called your subacromial space. And then when that happens, the shoulder can't freely move, which causes problems, okay? So when we get injuries that are happening, and after I go through this scapulohumeral rhythm, you'll understand why that's a big deal. So mostly that's from like, Thank you, God, like that yeah, it's, it's basically from the shoulders being held in an elevated, protracted, anterior, anteriorly tipped forward or displaced, kind of this way position, okay? So really tight anterior structures here, head forward posture, so this whole thing is going whoop, yeah. and everything back here is, uh -huh. is too long, it's too short, it's not it's not working right, you it's know? Too long. It's too long. I'm sorry, it's too long. Okay, so this stuff's too short, this stuff's too long, anatomically. Uh -huh. 
But what's happened is that these joints, 